Hi, I'm Jamie. I said I'd do a short tutorial about how to do the action blur of the photo I submitted to 52 frames. So I'm starting off in Lightroom and here is a series of photos I took of a ferry. Each of these was an individual photo, each is four seconds long. I did this at ISO 1600, although if I was doing it again, I would have done it at a higher ISO. However, it's going to be sufficient for what I want to do. So I want to select all the photos for this. Now, it might seem I don't want to go to stacking, but I actually want to take them all in and put them all into Photoshop. So I open those layers in Photoshop and this is going to take some time. And so we can sit back and just wait while Photoshop does its magic. All right, we are back. Now, something to note here is I actually took these photos of a ferry leaving as opposed to a ferry arriving. So the ferry in dock is the first photo. And then as we go through the photos, we end up with ferry leaving. So what we need to do is find a point that ferry actually begins to leave. So we're going to hide each of these photos in turn until we get a point that we actually see the ferry leaving. And so here is the light is turned off just as the ferry is about to leave. And we see the ferry leaving. So I'm going to put that one back and I'm going to Consider these photos from this point to the end as what I want to apply as the action blur. So I'm going to go here and do convert to smart object. An alternative way I can do this is actually to go into layer and go to smart objects, convert to smart objects. So there's multiple ways of doing this. And we are back. Now using the Smart Objects, you can go to the Smart Objects menu, go to Stack Mode, and tell Smart Objects to apply a mean across all the photos in the stack. And we are back. And as we see, we see the ferry blurred. But now the problem is we don't actually have the ferry at the end. We just see this blurry ghost of a ferry. So what we need to do is actually bring this ferry back. Now, I think, first of all, let's go and commit this stack. This is an optional step. A rasterize layer. And let's call this ferry blur. Then I'm going to bring this one back which is where I want to start. So I'll say very focus. And so what I want to do is try and have part of this is very focus and part of this is very blur. Now, if I go and change the opacity of this layer, well, I can kind of get a bit and bit, but I want to have a bit more control. And in particular, if we look here, we do see some blurring over here. I mean, we've got a number of items that are just going to be moving around through this whole shot. And so we are going to have blur places where places where we don't want the blur. So how do we have a bit more control? All right, so let's take that back to 100% and let's add a mask. And now that layer is selected. Now the white means that entire layer is selected. Our foreground to white, our background to black, and then we are going to alt click, make sure our gradient is selected and create a gradient. Let's just take a random guess. All right, we have a gradient. You can click anywhere on here. And we now see that we have actually got part of this is a bit more in focus while we lead to the blur. Let's go to channels and turn on our very focus mask channel and we can see the red. So we can now see how the mask is taking effect. Now I want to actually change that mask a little bit. So let's do this and I'm going to show a different technique here. I'm going to select very focus 
Again, I'm going to check my white and my black, select my gradient, and then I'm going to start here and just kind of go this way. See, I've got more control. And let's try this. Oh, interesting. No, I think I'm going to go with this one right here. OK, so we can play around with this in different ways. And I'm going to take off that red overlay. And let's see, we've actually got the blur coming in. And then we go into the focus of a ferry. And we've got a lot more focus on the actual dock. Now these grasses are pretty much stayed still, so these actually, we don't have to do any treatment. But if we needed to, we could actually go and use the paintbrush and we can switch out white and black. And we can choose a paintbrush size, certain hardness, and we can actually paint over this and control our transparency. And now we're happy with that. And then we need to take that back into Lightroom. So this is where having this stacked, converted to a raster image will help us. And so I'm going to save this and we're going to go back into Lightroom. All right, so now we're in Lightroom. We can go into Develop. And at this point, before we do anything else, we can actually apply some denoising. So if I go in and pull this exposure up, we can see a lot of noise over back here. So let's take that back and use Topaz Denoise to control this. All right, looks like if I specify a low light, this does a pretty good job. Let's zoom out a bit. OK, that's looking good. Let's zoom in. Yeah, I think we're good there. All right, make sure I've got the detail I want to have. And we can apply that. OK, we are now back in Lightroom. Let's play around with the exposure. I'm going to pull the exposure up. And we're going to make sure we've got our white balance right. Yeah, it was pretty good on our white balance when we started. All right. Let's crush the highlights and the whites. Um, you know, Try and bring the exposure up a bit more. Bring the shadows right up. All right. And let's take the exposure up. Max down. And then we're going to add some vibrance, some saturation. Let's really make the colors pop. And of course, we can play around with this however we want to. But that's essentially my workflow to create the image that I posted. I hope this was interesting for you and thank you very much.